Hello and a very warm welcome. Welcome to you all on this second Sunday before Lent. Hoping that you're all keeping safe and well. Hoping, as I mentioned last time, that the majority of you now have received your vaccinations and uh, hoping that as we progress through these next few weeks that we'll be looking forward to those restrictions being lifted and being able to come back into our churches for worship again together and hopefully that will happen fairly soon but we'll keep an eye on things and obviously communicate with you all when that will be possible. So welcome to our service today and uh, we begin with the collect prayer for the second Sunday before Lent. Almighty God, you've created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. first reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians chapter 1. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 
For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not recognise him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will, or of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. 
and the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So from the end of that gospel reading, we hear, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. A question that many people often ask is, how, how does God communicate with us? How does he speak to us? How do we hear him? Some religions say through the natural world, in the spirits that inhabit rocks and rivers and mountains. Others claim that an infallible book dropped from heaven into the lap of their founder. Astrologers read the stars, and there are those who say that God speaks through the spirits of the dead. The prologue to John's Gospel that we've just heard says God communicates with us by and through the Word, the creative power of God, God becoming flesh. Divine truth invading a human personality. Jesus. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. It seems to me that we learn of truth more through personal encounter than through some abstract idea. For example, if a child falls over and cuts their knee, what we don't do is show them a first aid book. What we do is we tend to the wound. Those who are lonely may find some comfort from watching TV or listening to the radio, but at the end of the day, they need a friend, they need a companion. And no doctrine of salvation, no amount of talking about being eternally saved can release someone who is imprisoned in a self-made hell. They need a real saviour. They need the word made flesh. They need Jesus. And there are those who ask, But what is God like? How can we know? What God is will always be way beyond what our human minds can ever understand. If anyone says, I understand God, then they're a million miles from that understanding. The nearest we will ever come to understanding God is when we encounter Jesus through whom millions have caught that vision of God's love in action during the last 2,000 years. And this concept of God becoming man is a difficult one for us to grasp, to understand. In fact, it is impossible for our finite human minds to fully comprehend the meaning of this belief, because it's to do with an infinite mystery of God. But we can realise something of the significance of this belief. It is indeed what the Church and the Bible both teach, and we, proclaiming our Christian faith in the words of the Creed, believe it also. I believe in one God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. We proclaim our faith and we say that we believe. We might not understand completely and fully, we never will, but we believe and we trust 
and we have that wonderful hope. The second thing that I want us to consider about this particular text, this beginning of John's Gospel, one that we've heard countless times and particularly on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, um, those, uh, that those words resound in our ears all the time, we hear them regularly. But the other thing that I want us to consider as well as trying to understand that we will never understand God fully, but that doesn't need to put us off, is that Christianity shares many truths with other religions, but here is where Christianity differs from other religions. Because Christianity dares to speak of God's dependence on humanity, on us. God's dependence on us. The word, almighty, powerful, an awesome force, became human, flesh, frail and vulnerable. God put himself at our mercy, entrusting himself into our hands. And where do we see that? Well, didn't Jesus need a human womb in which to be born, a human mother to nurture and feed him, a human father to carry him into Egypt away from Herod's fury, a group of friends to support and sometimes betray him, a conscript to carry his cross. And do you remember last week the image of God placing himself into the arms of Simeon in the temple. It was true then, it's still true today. Does he not need human hands to carry out the work here on this earth? Human hands through which he can heal. A human voice to bring comfort to the distressed. Human eyes to look in compassion on the lonely. A human presence to stand beside the outcast. Human brain power to make deserts fertile, feed the hungry and vaccinate against virus and disease. The word made flesh is an amazing demonstration of faith. Not of our faith in God, which flickers and fades and waxes and wanes, but of God's faith in us. Entrusting himself into the fate of our hands, our shaky, unreliable hands. And our calling, our mission, our purpose, our task as members of Christ Church here in these parishes, is to share this message with those who so desperately need to hear it. For those who are lost, hurt, wounded, bound up by their past mistakes, they need to hear that Jesus Christ gladly died for them, paid the price for all of their mistakes, wiping the slate clean forever and is calling them into a real living relationship with him today. A relationship of accepting and unconditional love. And all they have to do is believe, truly believe that Jesus Christ is real, is the wonderful Word made flesh who came into the world to stand alongside us and to put himself into our hands. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen.
And so finally, the blessing. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.